excited that there are so many studios producing an animation and that people are willing to invest in it, you know, all the mediums. And I actually am very, very excited about it. And like all, all live action films, and I, look, you know, not all of them are, are best pictures, you know? There's a lot of good movies and a lot of bad movies. It's the same with animated films, but films are being made. Artists are staying in our media. I would much rather be a, a player in a, in a healthy industry than be the only guy in a dead industry. And to me, that's the thing that, that I think as long as people, you know, the, the, the movies that make, make the most money in the box office are the ones that truly entertain audiences and they talk about it to other people and families go and people want to see it again. You know, and that's because the stories are good, pure and simple. Technology will never entertain an audience. It's what you do with the technology. And, and so it's the more that the filmmakers are given the reins and less of the studio executives and, and, and they're able to really kind of make entertaining films, you know, the, the more that they'll make money and hopefully it's, it'll start a cycle of, of making this, a lot of great animated films come out every year. But I'm a big, big fan of the I will pass along your words of encouragement to Jeffrey Kessler. <laughs> I'm still reeling from the fact that John is the wiener guy. <laughs> no, I really am. I, I've told the story so many times. I, I just, you just made my whole year. I, I, I have to add to that story, though. Uh, after the 2002 um, award ceremony, we were all standing waiting for the limos, and there was apparently John riding the wiener coming down the road. And, I was standing next to Judy Dench, who doesn't know anything about the Oscar Mayer Wiener, and she said, Oh my God, there's a man riding a banger coming down. You know, what, you know, I think, you're probably going to get, I would imagine you get the same answer from a lot of us, which is, if you learn anything after making films, it's a, it, at some point you are, you're going to live or die by uh, trusting you're going to figure something out through process, that it's always about process. It's not about, I would be dubious of everyone saying, of anyone saying, this is what I knew I was going to do and then I did it. You know, the, you, the process is, is something you must trust. Uh, um, and in terms of, uh, you know, what you find while you're working on something is, and what's surprising is what Gil was saying, is you've got 200 people, and it might be your key grip, it may be your actor, it may be um, the person you're working on the script with, it may be, and it may be the craft service person, and it, and it may be a family member who gives you something that is so essential and almost unthinkable that it wasn't there before. That's what's really fantastic about making films. And that, because otherwise I think it'd be a fairly thankless process. It would be a couple of years of your life and um, you know, you'd be connecting the dots on you know, like a paint by numbers set. It would just be a completely trumped up thing to do with your life. Um, and it's those moments where you're excited. Um, you know, I, Tom Prada, um, who wrote the novel uh, Little Children and, and also um, wrote the screenplay with me. Um, you know, we worked very hard on the script and I, I think we both felt that we had a very strong script, but that script was improved in so many ways by everyone who, who became involved with, with the film. Um, and I think probably the moment where I felt most excited and I, I thought, okay, I've got something here, was a moment that was never in the script and was, um, you know, uh, something we were struggling with, with, which was, I don't know how many people in the, in the room have even seen the film because I, I, I probably not even play here, but um, there's, a, um, there's a moment between uh, this character and his mother that uh, Ronnie and, uh, and his mother may, um, and it never really worked and it was really driving me nuts and I, I came home when we were pre-production and I said to my wife Serena Rathbun, uh, who's worked on all my films in some capacity, and I just said, this is making me nuts. And she said, well, you don't have the scene. You know, the scene's not there. And I said, well, I know, but what is it? And she said, this is what it is. She literally just gave it to me in a burst. Um, 
And as soon as she said it, I, I realized that, that it was the complete center, if there was a center to the film, it was in that speech that she just laid, you know, laid out for me. Um, and then when Phyllis Somerville, who, who plays, uh, plays the character, who delivers the speech, gives it to her son, Jack Earl Haley, I, you know, I, I thought, I'm going to be okay. You know, I, this is what the film is about. But I never knew that going in, and I didn't know it until right before we started shooting. Um, that's exciting, and it's probably, if there's anything of value that, that I learned along the way, it, it is, it's about process, and it's about everyone, the strangeness of, 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 of how things come together in, in, a, in a film that you're working on. Well, folks, uh, all of you have contributed great moments to our lives through your work. And we thank you for that and for being here this morning.